Hello, everybody. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening uh, to discuss our proposals, uh, emerging proposals for the Ashburton Youth Centre site. Um, my name is Alex Bright. I'm from Canada Consulting, uh, and we are helping with the public engagement side of things uh, for this project. Um, also with us this evening are my colleague Alex Sabin, who also works at Canada. Uh, Chris Jones, who is the Assistant Director for Housing Strategy and Development at Wandsworth Council. Joe Richardson, uh, who is Head of Housing Development at Wandsworth Council. Uh, Chris Hayhurst, Development Project Manager at Wandsworth. Paola Menzies, uh, Associate at Collado Collins Architects. Sarah Wilhelt, uh, who's the Landscape Architect at Camlins. And Rob Reeds, uh, who is the Associate Director for Planning, Development and Regeneration at Lambert Smith Hampton. So, uh, we've got the project team here for you this evening, and we would like to run through our um, where we're at, essentially. Um, and we're obviously at the very early stages of our engagement. Um, this is essentially the starting gun for that engagement, and we're very keen to be working with all residents um, and stakeholders from the community as we progress with these proposals. So I'm just going to set, uh, hand over to Chris Jones to say a little bit more about the, the proposals. Over to you, Chris. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Alex. And I mean, could I kind of thank those who have uh, logged on or uh, whatever you do? I think uh, in, in terms of this uh, kind of uh, tool, and apologies because it's the first time I've used this. So A, hopefully you can hear me, and if you can't, please say, and B, as I say, I'm very uh, uh, kind of uh, happy to, that you, you've taken the time to uh, come and uh, hear our presentation and what we have to say. And obviously there'll be an opportunity for questions. I would also say, I think these are kind of obviously exceptional times. And um, I think we would love to have uh, come in person and be physically there and, and to meet you and to talk through some of the ideas that have been uh, developed and you know we, we want to put forward um, but that's unfortunately we can't and what we understand is that whilst this is one opportunity for you to listen to us and uh, uh, obviously ask, uh, ask questions there'll be other opportunities as well and that could be on a one-to-one -one basis uh, small groups you know on team meetings or whatever however we might do it but I think it's very important that uh, it's seen as a, an ongoing dialogue and I think also just to say, I mean, we recognise that there are some very major stakeholders here. And, you know, whilst uh, we might use the term regenerate and obviously the other services that are kind of provided under that umbrella, uh, you know, the important thing and you know, what we fully recognise are the uh, users of the services that, that are provided on the site uh, currently, but also, um, you know, other local residents as well. So. I, I hopefully um, you know, that, that provides a bit of an introduction in that respect. Um, I think um, just also to say, you know, what are we trying to achieve? Well, I think um, Joe Richardson might well go into a bit more detail in terms of what the council is trying to achieve using its own land, which is to deliver um, uh, probably just under a thousand homes, but, but nevertheless, I mean, that figure varies as we, as we go forward in relation to the sites that we, want to develop, but that's a thousand homes. 60% um, of those homes would be what are called affordable or genuinely affordable housing. That's a mixture of kind of rented housing and housing that could, uh, people can buy on a part by basis. Uh, we are delivering some market housing as well uh, as part of that scheme, but you know, inevitably uh, we have to pay to build the housing that um, uh, you know, we're proposing. And part of that is about cross-subsidising that using the market housing that we provide. The other element I think that's important is um, not just here, but you know, on other sites, we're looking at uh, community facilities and how, if they're required, we can provide those. Clearly, they need to be funded as well. So when we're actually looking at the scheme, we're thinking about the cost of that as well. We need to include that in our calculations. And what we're trying to achieve, obviously, you know, uh, you know. What, what we're putting forward here is um, some housing, but I think also importantly, uh, and more importantly, uh, you know, a proposal around a new youth centre. So something that um, is fit for the future. And what I mean by that is not just over the next five years, but over the next 10, 20, 30 years, a building that 
kind of meets those environmental standards um, and also, uh, you know, potentially is is one that's made, say, more accessible. And also, I would really stress, you know, whilst you have a shell of a building and it's so many square metres, it's what goes inside it and how we can, you know, potentially and hopefully design that uh, with users of the uh, facility and obviously others as well. So how do you, what does the inside look like? To meet uh, you know uh, your objectives uh, in terms of how that space can work best for themselves. And in that respect, I think, as I've said before, and I'll say again, collaborative, a dialogue. You know, nothing's determined here. And if you look at the timeline, in a sense, what what the council is saying, look, we'll have a look at these options and designs. We, we might well revisit some of the options that we've looked at already because I think we, we need to be open to that. But you know, we will then you know take stock at the end of this calendar year about uh, you know proposals going forward and what might go forward and and how we might do that or, or otherwise indeed. But you know that is the time scale that we're working. So there's no kind of fixed time scale towards you know uh, kind of uh, 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 other stages until we've done this first stage, which Alex right, quite rightly says is is a first step. Um, so as I say. New Youth Centre, um, and my other kind of um, point, I, you know, to me that feels a good thing to have a have a dialogue about how we can achieve that. But that has to be done in context, and um, you know, I hope um, Andy doesn't mind. But I mean, you know, I had an exchange of emails with uh, with with Andy as the chief exec, and there were a number of things I think we needed to um, absolutely commit to, and I will repeat those now. So. Um, you know, you're hearing them. I mean, firstly, um, I think it is worth saying, I know it's been uh, kind of said, uh, hopefully a number of times, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll pass this on. Uh, the Director of Children's Services, who obviously uh, is a Bonswell Council employee, um, clearly sees the value, the significant value of the services being delivered by Regenerate and its kind of partner organisations. And, um, the very, very clear message to um, the development team here and also to our own officers as well, who might be in a dialogue around accommodation and such like, is that the service has, there has to be continuity of service. The service can't be disrupted. It needs to be there and it needs to be providing the services which are so vital uh, to the local community and the uses of those services. So that's a kind of bottom line. We, you know, we have to work to that and we have to kind of think about can we achieve the end goal, new youth centre housing, um, uh, by achieving that as a baseline uh, to, to moving forward. Um, so continuity of service and you know, how do we achieve that? Um, and I would say that, you know, if you start unpacking that, um, the current... The proposal that, that has, has been worked up to the point where uh, you know we want to talk about what the building is, what, you know the size of it, and, and what have you. Um, how do we achieve that? Well, I mean, you know, the, the difficulty and the absolute challenge, and one that you know is made very clear to us uh, is one that we've not proven can 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 be satisfactorily um, delivered. But I think that's where we want the dialogue is that that continuity of service and seamlessness needs to be within the context of the community and the users that that, uh, that, that service uh, uh, delivers to. And, you know, the range of services as well. So, you know, those are things that we have to think about and we need to um, respond to, you know, we need to satisfy those things. Now, it would be great, and, you know, I, I, I remember uh, you know, when um, some of the kind of ideas were being put to me and, and what have you, that one of our ideas was that we would build a new youth centre next to the old one, as it still currently occupied, and then there would be a seamless move from one building to the other. Now, that would be the great, and that would be the ideal things to do. We could achieve that, and if we could achieve the value to build a, a new youth centre, you know, that is something that we'd be open to look at. Um, but within the dialogue and, and within, you know, the objectives that we're trying to achieve, which is maximising the housing and, and maximising the, the, the kind of, you know, the facility and the size of that facility. 
So you know, we can have those dialogues, some of those ideas, and you know that is one that has been explored. Might might need to you know be put aside because it just doesn't work financially. But the important thing is we have the dialogue about those things, and we have the dialogue about um, you know whether there is a way to provide. If say if, a, if an option such as this were further developed, if we could provide some form of temporary accommodation and temporary option, so it's it's about you know seeing that and seeing what the options are, looking at those options and and you know either accepting them or dismissing them. I think the other thing is to talk about timescales and timelines, and I think there's two things to say here. You know, whilst we're having a discussion now, if um, you know parties and and we uh, together with yourselves you know local residents stakeholders um we're able to sort of say look you, you know there's a plan here i can assure you that plan wouldn't be implemented you know in terms of moves and what have you in the next calendar year in 2021 um you know these things take a huge amount of time and you are you are really talking about even with a fair wind 18 months to two years before you would even start on site on any development anywhere, because you've got to go through so many processes in terms of you know getting a developer or getting a contractor to build something, getting planning permission, what have you. There's a second thing to say about timelines, and that is fully recognizing that uh, Regenerate is funded from a whole range of different sources of um, uh, funding, and that funding comes with uh, commitments to deliver certain things and certain outcomes and you know that might well also be something that would need to be taken into account if we can get over the hurdles that, that currently confront us um, you know if a temporary facility was was required um, and or, or, or was it as agreed as as part of of going forward and we could identify something so that hurdle has to be got, got over and then there's there's this uh, one around um, uh, kind of timelines and agreeing those relative to the activities and funding streams. So as I say, there's a lot to think about and I'm sure I've not, not covered all of those things, but hopefully that gives um, a, a kind of level of um, uh, you know, understanding in terms of where uh, we're coming from as a development team. And very much you know, the message uh, from Wandsworth Council, I've talked about the director of uh, children's services, but you know, generally for lead members as well, is you know this is this is about a dialogue to try and achieve an aim, and you know I would hope that we can we can get there, but but you know there is there are absolute challenges that we would acknowledge in terms of uh, you know meeting the, the the key objectives that that, that that are there. We very much recognise in relation to continuity and seamlessness of services. So uh, that's my bit. Um, I was going to ask Joe if there's anything else we need to pick up on, but but if not, obviously we can kind of crack on. Uh, yes, Chris, thanks for that. Um, there's not a lot more to add, really. As I say, I, uh, just to introduce myself again, I head up the housing home program, the housing development program, and really, uh, probably if I just give you a bit of a brief update as to where that program is at the moment. So, uh, as they a thousand homes were identified. On uh, throughout our uh, land holdings of the borough. Um, pleased to report to date that the first 100 homes have been completed uh, within that 1,000 homes program, and all of which have been affordable rent or indeed a social rent for those that have moved from existing tenancy. So, um, this particular site um, uh, was identified as having the potential to accommodate residential and uh, youth centres. So, uh, it sits very much within that wider program uh, for this particular site. Let's say we um, the funding for the overall development will be a mixture of sale income that is generated from sales on this site. And really that is, the, that is primarily the driver to ensure that we can actually deliver that. Could I just say, Joe, you're slightly breaking up for me. Sorry, Joe, I think you're breaking up for me. And if Alex is nodding, I think you okay. might be breaking up for others as well. Yeah, but I think I will, what, what, what essentially you're, you're saying is. is yeah, yeah. Uh, what what essentially I think Joe is 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 saying is that he's just giving an overview of of, of the, the, our overall development program. And in terms of that program, um, you know, up front, 
what, what, the, what that program is delivering is is all uh, genuinely affordable rented housing. So um, you know, I think around the first and Joe will nod if I've got the number wrong, but around the first two hundred units of that program is is is, is rent. So it's it's not a program which is in a sense um, uh, kind of um, you know delivering the market housing before it delivers the affordable. You know, very much it's a scheme that uh, you know, and apologies for using the terms, kind of front loaded. And you know, we're very focused on on, on uh, delivering those those elements. And a lot of the market housing, which will help cross subsidise, is actually later in the program. Brilliant. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Joe, for that. That's really helpful. Um, providing the overview there of the of the project. Um, what I will say, obviously, for for the remainder, the format for the remainder of this evening will be, uh, we're now going to hand over to um, Paula, and we're going to bring on Rob and Sara, and uh, the project team are just going to talk you through a bit of a presentation, just to give you a bit more of an overview of of the scheme and where we're at at the moment. Um, I can see we've already had a couple of questions come in, so thank you very much for that. Um, what I'll also say is you may want to save your questions towards the end of the evening. Uh, we will then have an opportunity um, to have a bit of a Q&A. So um, it, throughout the presentation, you may find your question has already been answered. So that's why I say you may just want to, to hold fire uh, until towards the end. Um, otherwise, uh, you can post your questions uh, in the chat on the sidebar there and we will try to answer them as best as we can later on so uh, there's going to be a slight change around on the stage now so uh, so that we can share our screen and share the presentation so um, please bear with us a moment Okay. Um, should I start, Rob? Yeah, go ahead. Is there any way of making that slightly bigger? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So, um, this is the site. Um, we can see here the existing building and the existing sports uh, pitch. What we are proposing here is to demolish this building, to build a new building that is going to integrate the two uses. This is going to be part residential, 24 new homes, and the uh, reprovided youth center. The sports pitch here needs to move slightly towards the south to allow for space for the new building. As I mentioned, uh, we are going to provide 24 new homes as the, the current uh, proposals, and 33% of these it will be affordable share ownership. The new youth center will be a fit for purpose building. We will provide the same floor space the current building provides. So the center can operate as it operates right now, but in a new building. Um, in any case, we, work, we are going to be working closely together with Regenerate, the operators, to ensure that the new building is suitable for their, their needs. Um, we can see here in the light gray uh, shape is the proposed footprint. And in this diagram shows how we are keeping most of the existing buildings. In particular, uh, this nice building at the front of the site and these other big trees at the rear of the site. 
they, this diagram shows the separation distance uh, from our proposed building to the existing surrounding buildings. So we have around okay. I believe we might have lost Paula for a minute. Can I suggest maybe whilst uh, Paula uh, is trying to log back in, maybe we can deal with some of the questions? No, she's back. We can do. Or, uh, Rob, do you want uh, to continue? Or unless you want to carry on, Rob? Yeah, I, I, I can pick it up from here. Um, yep. So, as, as Paula was saying, we've been through um, a process. Uh, at the moment with um, with the architects and uh, landscape uh, architects uh, to look at the site's characteristics and um, assess the site's potential to accommodate a, a, a new youth club um, along with associated residential uh, accommodation. Uh, we've, when we begin to undertake these types of uh, activities, um, we assess the surrounding context for uh, distance to neighbouring homes, um, heights of existing buildings, um, sunlight uh, and daylight, um, access uh, to the building, um, along with a range of other factors uh, which will help us work out the site's uh, opportunities and, and constraints. Um, as you can see, there are some existing trees on the site uh, which we've had surveyed. Um, and they'll be retained as far as possible uh, within the within the proposed scheme. Um, there are minimum distances between habitable rooms uh, that we've uh, have been required to accommodate um, for the scheme, and that begins to set the parameters of where a building could actually be placed on the site. Um, so we're maintaining a minimum um, back to back or front to front distance from existing. Uh, residential properties of, of 30 meters and then the flank walls as well will also need an offset. Um, with regards to the height of the existing buildings we've looked at um, uh, the townscape and streetscape uh, around the site, um, generally two to three stories with some taller elements uh, in the surrounding area but not much taller um, and therefore that's kind of set the, the general parameters for height and massing um, are, are on the site as well. And then looking at the orientation of the site and that begins to kind of dictate the layout and, and what that may, um, may um, be able to accommodate, the site be able to accommodate, both in terms of where existing buildings lie, um, existing um, uh, uh, orientation, sun path, um, and we've undertaken that analysis too. Can we move on to the next slide? There are other parts to it, like I mentioned, um, for example, access and where existing accesses to the site um, are, are as well. And then we'll have to factor in where the proposed accesses are, are going to be. As you will um, see a little bit, a little bit further on, uh, there are two different land uses proposed. Um, one is the youth centre uh, and one is residential accommodation. And we need to think about how they can be serviced and accessed appropriately uh, to ensure that um, either traffic, parking, pedestrian or cycle movements uh, don't conflict with each other. So we've looked at a residential access which is separate to the youth centre access. They'll be accessed at slightly different times and therefore um, it's something that we've, we've approached um, with, um, with, with that in mind. Um, there are also more detailed um, aspects of the scheme such as um, parking, uh, bins and storage. Um, and they need to be within a minimum distance to the to the site frontage. So we've had to locate those in a um, in appropriate positions. But like I say, that, that's kind of more more detailed. Um, we are taking a policy compliant approach uh, to parking, uh, reducing uh, parking allowances where uh, where possible, but also providing some parking for for the youth centre and also for uh, some of the residential units as well. 
um, especially accessible parking spaces. And these are um, these are aspects of the scheme that we're looking at in further detail to ensure that. Um, they both conform with Wandsworth's uh, planning policies, uh, but also are uh, suitable for the end uses. Uh, so, for example, the youth club and their, their needs opera and operation requirements. In terms of outdoor space, this is something that we'll potentially uh, touch on a little bit later. Um, but there's been a requirement to uh, replace the MUGA, which is, uh, which is well used at the moment. Um, and that will be uh, replaced as a like-for-like -like replacement uh, towards the uh, rear or south of the site. And then there's um, an enhancement of um, some of the uh, areas to the front of the site. And I think we can we can touch on that in a little bit more detail. And we think that's certainly in an, er an area where uh, local input would be uh, would be really useful as the proposals develop. move on to the next slide so um, there are generally two components to the um, to the scheme uh, one being uh, the existing oh, sorry the new youth center um, and that's a process that we're working through at the moment um, working closely with uh, regenerate to understand their requirements and ensuring that what we put forward uh, in the scheme is um, is suitable for um, how they operate. Um, the second part is uh, the new uh, homes, so the residential component of the scheme, which you can see is located to the to the left um, part of the plot, um, which is uh, to the west of the site. And there's 24 new residential units um, going in there. We have been through a design process of looking at several different options in terms of layout and um, and, and different massing. And this is the preferred option at the moment. Um, we're proposing car parking spaces for the youth club, as well as um, minibus space for drop-offs and collections, um, and also uh, additional parking spaces for um, residential, uh, which is in line with uh, the emerging London-wide and Wandsworth policies. This is an area that we're undertaking some more work into. We're undertaking um, uh, um, assessments of on-street parking in the surrounding area, and that will be something that um, that we that we move forward and ensure that um, we get feedback from uh, from uh, the public on as well. I think it's worth now uh, passing over to Sarah, who can talk about the the landscaping aspects of the scheme uh, that you can see on the screen now. Yeah, so um, can, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, this We um, drew up this plan uh, with the trees really in mind. Basically, the key is to retain all the high quality trees um, and plant more trees in the locations that will complement the existing tree planting. Um, so everything we've done has been really to kind of keep keep those key trees um, there and not disturb them. Um, there's also um, a clear spillet um, between the residential amenity area and the youth centre amenity area. So youth centre to the south of the site and residential to the north of the site. Here is um, sort of seating or play or um, other things that can be um, discussed as the process goes on and then um, with the res um, the youth centre area that's um, sort of the reprovision of the uh, MUGA shifting the location just further south and um, reprovision of horticultural um, growing beds uh, which were previously on the site uh, but also providing uh, more access round to the sort of east of the site um, for, again, seating or play. Um, and then we've also looked into strengthening the boundary. So uh, provide um, planting a hedge right around the extent of the full boundary, but also um, adding areas with sort of denser, shrubby um, planting, which will strengthen that boundary sort of to the 
um, to the west and to the south. Um, yeah, and that's that's the landscape. So here you can see the existing condition. So the trees um, over here um, on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, um, the sports pitch. I don't know if, um, I can't quite see the bottom of the page um, on the screen, but um, you can see there sort of the vision in the future, sort of um, integrated play and seating areas, um, a strengthened boundary and increased growing space. Thanks for that. Um, so I'll just really quickly summarise before uh, passing back um, to uh, to some of the other project team is that we're in an early stage of um, stage of the process at the moment. What we've done uh, to date is essentially um, baseline assessments, um, looking at the existing conditions of the site, um, looking at a variety of uh, different options that may be uh, that may be able to thrive uh, within within this location, and then starting to narrow down what the aims and objectives um, are of the site, and that's where that's the process that we've got to at the moment. Um, this is obviously the first consultation event, and we're un and this is to kind of understand um, any early thoughts, views, opinions. Um, so, which can feed into kind of the later design processes. Um, I'm just going to pass. Um, I think now is probably a good good time just to wrap up that um, that section, uh, the overview. Um, we haven't got to the stage where there are detailed proposals um, with regards to what a future building would look like, um, because, like I say, we're very early in that process. Um, but I, if I if I hand back now, we can uh, can move to the next section. Great, thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you for that presentation. That's much appreciated. Uh, apologies to everyone listening for the technical problems we had there, but uh, thank you very much, um, guys, for, for stepping in there. Um, so we've got lots of questions coming through, so thank you very much for your questions. We'll uh, certainly do our best to try and get through them all. Um, I can see there's quite a few common themes, so it may be best that I try to group them uh, into themes. Uh, so I can see there is a question. There are lots of questions about car parking uh, on site, and the amount of car parking provision, uh, particularly uh, as a ratio, I suppose, to the amount of housing that we're providing on site. So, um, would somebody from the from the team uh, like to address the kind of question about car parking and, and how we've got to that ratio? Yeah, thanks, Alex. I can, um, I can take this. So I think it's worth saying that uh, we're quite early uh, in the process of thinking about how the site can be uh, can be delivered, especially with regards to uh, parking. We've undertake uh, taken a first set of uh, surveys, um, looking at the um, the parking in and around um, the the surrounding streets, uh, which is also looking at um, where there are CPZs or controlled parking zones. Um, where there is a lack of control um, and also a, um, a data that feeds into uh, car occupancy and car ownership uh, within the area as well. Uh, that all feeds back into um, kind of our assessment and there is a presumption um, that car parking standards are at a maximum. So there's been a bit of a turn over the um, over the past few years with regards to um, how residential uh, parking um, is allocated um, to, um, to sites and the presumption with a robust travel plan for both the uh, residential units and also the um, uh, also the youth club, um, along with um, other measures, soft measures such as um, car clubs. Um, that presumption is to reduce the parking on and around the site uh, and parking spaces allocated to uh, to flats to to a minimum. 
And there's a policy requirement for uh, 10%, up to 10% um, accessible car, car parking spaces uh, for those units which will be um, accessible units. Uh, so that's the provision um, that, that we've made at the moment. Um, in terms of youth club parking, uh, that's something that we're, we're yet to uh, kind of finalise with, with Regenerate. We know that there is a requirement for uh, parking there for drop-offs and for uh, people who also visit the site to um, either give, um, wh whether it be sessions or lessons or, um, or activities, uh, but also uh, minibus provision as well. And that's something that we'll be, we'll be doing too. Um, like I say, we are early uh, in this process. I can't stress that enough. Um, and we will be taking on board uh, public comments um, as we as we work towards this. Uh, we'll also be discussing the proposals in specific regard to parking uh, with our colleagues at um, or sorry, the planning department um, to uh, to work out how they um, uh, they view the proposals. Uh, it's likely that a car club space will be secured with the site as well, um, and we'll be we'll be taking everything on board that we can to feed into the kind of next iterations of the proposals. Great, thanks very much, Rob, for that. That's much appreciated. Um, turning to the construction of the youth centre, there's quite a few questions about that. So, um, Keith asks, when do you expect to make a decision on whether you can build the replacement youth centre before knocking the original one down? Um, and I'll group that with another one. Um, Helen asks about, I mean, hopefully by this point, Helen, you may have seen through the presentation exactly the layouts that's being proposed, but Helen asks, are you proposing to build a youth club under a block of homes? And would that pass planning commission and how would that work for community harmony? So couple of questions there about the kind of logistics of construction of the youth centre. Who's going to take that question for us? Well, I, I'm well, happy to yeah. take the kind of the planning uh, aspects of it and then I'll probably pass over to maybe uh, Chris or Chris to talk about the kind of the more detailed construction. Um, so mixed use developments are, um, are something that uh, we work on on a day to day basis. Um, those uses that uh, once would have conflicted uh, potentially with each other are now now find find harmony, and we understand that there are going to be some um, some intricacies with um, ensuring that the activities uh, of the youth club um, can coexist with uh, the activities or living conditions of the residential units, and whether that be uh, potential uh, access. Uh, whether it be noise uh, or whether it be light um, uh, pollution, for, for example, or, no uh, or noise concerns, that's something that we will have to demonstrate acceptability uh, on throughout the planning process. And that will be independently assessed by Wandsworth, um, Wandsworth Council, um, who have a duty, uh, Wandsworth uh, Council as in the, the planning authority uh, side, and they've got a duty to ensure that there is a protection of both existing users and uh, future users of um, all schemes, so of, of all uses, including uh, neighbouring residential uses, including uh, the existing and uh, proposed new youth centre, um, and the new residents that will uh, or may move into uh, may, may move into this block. So there's a lot of um, detail that we've yet to get stuck into in terms of ensuring that uh, these uses can can coexist. Um, and rest assured that we'll be going through the, those processes uh, robustly and diligently uh, to ensure that that these two uses uh, can coexist together. Thank you. Does either Chris Jones or Chris Hayhurst, is there anything else you'd like to add to that at all? Um, I think probably just on uh, that to top, up to the top because it was Keith's point. I now can't see for some reason, but nevertheless, I do remember it. Um, I mean, essentially, we're trying to work to that kind of December, end of the calendar year time to make a decision about, uh, you know, options and, uh, you know, whether and what to go forward with. I mean, I would again say, you know, hopefully the kind of presentation of the plan and the boards have shown, I suppose, a bit of a vision. But, you know, we know, and I will repeat, 
that you know there has to be a, a, an absolute commitment, as I think one of the questions says, to continuity of service. Now, I, you know, unpacking that a bit, I think sometimes there's always a compromise with, with say, a temporary uh, kind of solution. But we're, we fully recognise that that sort of temporary solution has to be, you know, around and and on, on effectively on the Ashburton estate. So it's how we can do that: temporary buildings, things that we can explore uh, with the cell. And I know Andy asked another question about kind of tenure. Um, I suppose. You know the reality is, and and apologies because I know uh, Joe Richardson's line was broken, breaking up. I mean, the council are already subsidising the cost of the affordable housing that we're delivering to the tune of eighty million pounds. And I'll, I'll be upfront with you. I mean, costs have gone up, and you know that figure is now over a hundred million pounds. So we have we don't have a huge amount of room for manoeuvre in terms of the amount of subsidy going into the scheme. But you know, I'm I am happy that we explore any option, and you know that would include looking at, at the tenure mix, looking at social rent housing. But we have to do that within the context of the other things we're trying to achieve. One of which is clearly uh, providing sufficient funding. Uh, you know, if we if we want to try and deliver that vision of a, of a new community centre. I also saw kind of Andy's reference to parking and the number of vehicles that are required to deliver you know, the range of, of, of activities. And we need to take that into account as well. I think kind of Rob referenced that in terms of, you know, the stock take that we need to do about those uh, particular elements. So, uh, Alex, over to you probably. Thanks, Chris. I think, um, I mean, you've, you've really summed up the feeling there about the youth centre. And I think just looking at Jennifer Forrest's question here about saying, comment really she says apart from the Boyd Court there's no other community site on the estate the residents used to have a pub but now have nowhere community to meet the youth centre is vital and if anything is added to the site um, it needs to be community based so I think more of a comment there and I think um, yeah. as Chris there you, you have outlined obviously the intentions for the youth centre. And I would say thanks for, thanks for that comment because I think those are the types of things we probably need to hear in terms of you know any facility that might um you know that, that might be provided and again you know that that's that's potentially a, a a challenge to kind of other stakeholders who would want the space and would uh, no doubt maximize use of that space uh, and i see that say, um, andy asked a question a hundred thousand pounds to build a flat i wish it were <laughs> it's significantly more than that yeah a lot more than that my and I think one of, uh, just leading on from Jennifer's other point, she mentions just going back to car parking. Um, obviously, uh, we've we've addressed the, the amount of car parking there. And um, she has said that perhaps uh, they all need to be electric charge points as possible. That's a, a comment to take away, I think, in terms of the electric charging. Um, just looking at going through some more of the questions, uh, Helen um, mentions about you uh, were not informed about the proposed development and only heard about the webinar this evening through word of mouth. So question is, why haven't you been informed? Apologies if you haven't heard about that and if you um, weren't reached, so uh, sorry about that. We sent out a flyer to uh, 800 properties surrounding the youth centre, so a fairly wide, wide area. Um, so that went to over 800 properties uh, advertising the proposals, giving a bit of an outline as to the, the scheme that we're hoping to bring forward and also advertising the webinar this evening. So um, if that didn't reach you, we'll um, make sure that we perhaps go a bit wider in our in our next distribution to, um, to make sure. And, you know, if you have any questions after this evening, do feel free to, to email them through to us. I'll be mentioning the email address again at the end of the evening. Um, could I add? I'm always, I'm also always worried about uh, people not getting flyers and what have you. And you know, it's something we take extremely seriously. So if that that has happened, you know, we want to know about it and what the address was, and we check back with those delivering to make sure that um, you know why that why that has happened and why that might have happened. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Um, having. A look through some more questions so uh comment from andy here so for the health and well-being of young people on the ashburton state we need guaranteed continuity of regenerate projects on the current site to facilitate, 
to facilitate all that is going on for the 300 young people regularly regularly use regenerate services there isn't in uh, another facility on the ashburton that could house all the projects whilst demolition took place did you want to talk a bit more about that or i think we we've covered that quite well but then if we have any other comments if not we'll move on because so i think we have covered that uh very well just seeing some more themes we've got. Obviously, Sarah, you also talk about um, that crucial part of this plan is that the engagement of Regenerate with the local youth club members. Absolutely. Um, we're very keen to engage um, everybody who has an interest in the site. Um, as has been mentioned already, we're very keen to continue engaging with Andy and everyone at Regenerate. So that's that's an absolute given that we really do want to make sure that everybody is involved in this process and has an opportunity to have a say and an input and that you're kept up to date throughout the whole thing. So um, absolutely agree there that um, it is crucial that we involve Regenerate and everyone who uses this site in the proposal. Um, just seeing any more themes coming through. So Andy has also said, can you say something about the Alton Youth Club in Roehampton? Um, and obviously plans there. I mean, that is a different scheme to this. And I think we're, we're quite keen to make sure that we're keeping tonight's conversation about the proposals for um, Ashburton. Um, that's the most important, you know, the Ashburton Youth Centre site is, is most important to everybody here this evening. So I think it's important that we keep focused on, on what's, um, what's being discussed here. Um, just seeing who else has got some questions. So uh, Claire Smith asks, uh, is it realistic to think new residents would want to live and be happy living or willing to buy a property in such close proximity to the youth centre and public MUGA? I think this perhaps also plays into the wider conversation about the need for obviously for housing. Um, and I think uh, would anyone from the team like to talk about that a bit more? I mean, certainly I can pick up that and it, it might feed slightly into Nadia's uh, question as well, uh, Nadia Jackman. Um, uh, I mean, certainly, you know, one of the things that, that as you know, I, I work across a number of different kind of, uh, you know, themes and services, but the reason why we employ architects, the reason why we employ consultants is to essentially inform us that we're, we're building the right thing, we're building it in the right way, and it achieves the goals that we want to, um, you know, see delivered. So, I mean, that's 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 the first thing. In terms of Nadia's comment about genuinely affordable, um, I mean, I would say, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a term that's been used by the London Mayor, and, um, you know, in terms of the housing and the affordable housing we're delivering, we align with the London Mayor's uh, kind of definitions in that respect. So London affordable rent, is 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 termed genuinely affordable um intermediate rent um you know there's requirements there in terms of london living rent and in actual fact i think in terms of london living rent uh, as a council we would aim to actually deliver uh, units lower than uh, uh sixty thousand pounds which is kind of you know a benchmark for for london living rent in terms of incomes and affordability um in terms of shared ownership as well i mean obviously the mayor uh, provides guidance in terms of, of, of uh, shared ownership being affordable to a range of incomes and we we obviously align with that as well so you know the term is one that I think is is used in that respect in in, in uh, regional planning policy and though that is what we would align to I mean very often we would we would offer accommodation at, in actual fact at lower London rents uh, for instance where a household might be transferring from one property to another so we do kind of you know uh, kind of vary that in terms of uh, individual household circumstances as well so i hope that's that's answered that question um just to say i mean i will repeat what i've said before and i'll keep on repeating it continuity of service and commitment to regenerate 
Yeah, and, you know, I, I mentioned the director of children's services comment because uh, you know she wished me to, and you know I'm instructed to to essentially uh, you know make that commitment. You know, the service is valued. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. And I think um, your comments at the end probably address um, many comments that we're having coming in about obviously the importance of ensuring continuity of service here and, and um, the services that Regenerate provides. So I think, um, yes, absolutely right. I think we are, uh, that pretty much answers a lot of the, the questions we're getting coming in here and a lot of the comments um, about ensuring the importance of, of Regenerate's continuity of service. So I think that's something that, um, as I hopefully you've all heard loud and clear throughout this evening that the project team is absolutely committed and uh, keen to maintain. So um, thank you for that. Lots of comments, so which I'm just trying to make sure that we're covering all uh, themes and all points. A lot of them are very much the same theme. So if you do have any other questions on any other aspects of the project, then please feel free to post them. Um, A lot of comments as well. Please do feel free to post your questions. Otherwise, we're very much taking on board the comments you're posting. They're very helpful. Thank you. Um, hopefully, it will be probably more useful to you if we can uh, try to answer some of your questions. Um, okay. There's Georgina asks. Just going back to parking about um, insufficient parking and the impact that may have on paving. Um, over of front gardens or and the impact that may have on runoff or flooding and environmental impact so um perhaps rob did you or anybody else want to say anything a bit more about parking and and any impact or impact assessments they may that may have on the local area and, and residents who live nearby yeah uh, thanks alex so that's something that we're um we will have to demonstrate uh, within a future uh, planning application, should one uh, one come about, is that the stresses and strains of this proposal uh, would not have an adverse impact on the ability of um, the rest of the surrounding area in terms of highways and, and parking um, to uh, not to function. Um, and that's a process that we'll go through with our transport advisors. Um, and that assessment will need to undertake uh, um, assessments on um, neighbouring roads, uh, on um, neighbouring pressure points, junctions, uh, things like that, uh, to ensure that uh, highway safety, uh, in, and which includes parking, um, will be will be met. In terms of things like drainage uh, and runoff and things like that, we will need to submit a, um, a sustainable urban drainage strategy, uh, which um, uh, which takes into account uh, surface runoff um, of, of water um, and other um, and other environmental um, things like that, basically encompassed within within some kind of sustainability statement. Um, and also will ensure that um, within the SUDS, um, within the sustainable urban, urban drainage strategy, uh, through the landscaping, uh, that, that that will be addressed um, through kind of a first principles approach uh, to that in, in addressing uh, surface runoff uh, and drainage issues um, through landscaping, first of all. Great. Thanks, Rob. Hopefully that uh, addresses your, your question, Georgina. Um, a couple of comments, more comments here from Andy. Uh, interestingly, those trees that Zara was talking about were planted in 1960 when the building was built as a hub for the new estate. Um, thank you. I think Zara, I'm sure, has heard that loud and clear. So very good knowledge and intel to have there. Thank you. Um, Andy also says uh, about the cost of the Mooga, um, the relocation of that. Obviously, that would, I mean, we've talked about the relocation of that. Um, would anyone in the project team just like to talk a bit more about relocating Mooga specifically um, that we've touched on this evening? Who would like to talk about the Mooga? Joe is going to. Yeah, I, I can quickly do so if Joe. Yeah, sorry, um, hopefully my connection is better than it was there. I mean, yeah, it's uh, we recognize the importance of it. I mean, it's, it's very much factored into the, uh, into the numbers that underpin. I mean, uh, it, it, 
appreciate it's an important part of the local community and indeed the activities that we generate. So uh, it's a cost we have to bear. We, it helps to facilitate that development as a whole. So yes, it will need to be provided as we've shown there in the plan. Thanks, Joe. Did you want to say anything else, Rob, or you happy? No, j just that there will be a planning policy requirement to either uh, replace the MUGA on or off site. And we feel that the MUGA plays a really important part of, um, of providing a service. And, and that's why it has been um, retained. Um, and as Joe says, that is a cost that the development will, will need to bear. But it is it's important for the continuity of, of the and, and the programmes that, that regenerate run. Thanks, Rob. Um, touching, up on, touching on another uh, of Andy's questions, um, am I right in saying your plans show 25% of the new homes are affordable homes and 75% market value and no social housing? If Regenerate were to present a plan where 24 social, ho uh, social houses were provided and we could build a newer, bigger and better youth centre before knocking down the current one, would that be something you would consider? Hopefully, detailed question there, but uh... it's a detailed question. I mean, you know, I, I think it comes comes back to the the kind of points that that I've made already. You know, things have to work financially, and um, you know, we need to consider the costs of uh, any new development, and also overall the costs of the pro our program. Um, but you know, I think we're we're willing to consider and cost options to see whether we can make things work you know there's no reason for us not to do that and for for us to i mean you know i think there's always things about commercial confidentiality and my apologies sometimes i get a bit lost in uh, those kinds of things but you know i think we have to be as transparent as we possibly can about what what we can afford to do thanks chris um and another Annie's comments here about regenerate has four vehicles, nine uh, nine minibus, a minibus. I think that is meant to say van and two mobile coffee vehicles for the feel good bakery social enterprise employing young people and also twenty eight staff and some of them need car parking. So, okay, um, heard that. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, looking through some more questions, still coming in. Thank you very much. Um, Helen, again, just talking about the uh, all properties on the Ashburton estate should be included in the distribution area. Um, hopefully, we've answered your question earlier, and Chris um, gave a very good commitment, very strong commitment there. We will go away and have a look at the distribution area again and make sure that we're capturing everybody that. Again, if that. you if you provide us with, with details, we'll make sure a that something should have been posted to you, and if not, obviously, we'll get back to you. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Zarina says regenerates at the heart of the neighbourhood and provides endless opportunities for all ages in the community. It would be a disadvantage and step back to replace the site which provides a helping service with a block of flats, increasing the residents and de decreasing the support, which uh, would this be sufficient to supporting our youth? I think hopefully you've you've now, hopefully we've addressed that question um, already. Obviously we're uh, looking to keep the youth centre on site, building a brand new, a fit for purpose youth centre um, you know, in uh, concert with some new homes on site. So um, not talking about uh, obviously ending the, the fantastic services that Regenerate provides at all. Um, and hopefully that's that's been made very clear to you this evening. Um, but thank you for your comment, um, taking that on board. Um, having a look through some more questions a few of the same questions i think we've already answered just seeing if there are any that we haven't really covered okay obviously francini um we're obviously yes i mean we do want to work closely with you that's you know that's what we're wanting to do um this is a conversation that we want to have with everybody who has a vested interest in this site 
um, we appreciate that you know the youth centre and all the services provided on site are of vital importance and of interest to everybody who lives around um, around the youth centre and who uses the site. So uh, we want to make sure you know this is the beginning of a conversation, beginning of a dialogue as of you know this evening, as a, as of the flyer that we sent out a week ago. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is very much the starting gun for that. So do feel free to continue to you know, email in if you have any questions, if you have any comments. This is, as I say, the first of many conversations we want to have with you. So we'll be having more events like this and more opportunities to hear from you and engage with the wider community. Um, as I say, if you have any questions at any point, please do get in touch. Um, it's worth me mentioning now, I'll mention it again at the end, but the email address to, to contact is development team at richmondandwandsworth.gov.uk. So that's development team at richmondandwandsworth.gov.uk if you have any questions about, uh, about any of this at all. Um, so Caitlin, hey, my name is Caitlin Sadler. Me and my sisters and brother have been come, coming to Ashburton Youth Club since 2011. There's so much for memories to be made uh, by other children like we did. This is a place for such a long time. Um, this place makes young people feel free and have fun with their friends. Why are changing it now? So uh, hopefully, as you just heard, obviously not really seeking to change that or take anything away from that experience whatsoever. Hopefully, um, you'll have heard that the intention is very much to build a see, brand new fit for purpose youth centre on, on site. Um, but very, very valuable to hear um how much obviously it means to the community i mean could i just come in there you know i, th yeah. I absolutely kind of I absolutely recognize what caitlin's saying there and you know I, you know recognizing how important kind of uh, that th th this local facility is um i suppose you know the proposition is one about having a youth center a, a new youth center which will, will will go into the future you know you know it's, it's kind of more it's greener you know in terms of how it, it works as a building and what have you so that's the proposition and you know i think there's two two elements isn't there i think one any journey can be quite it can be difficult but it has to start somewhere and clearly you know the council has an objective about housing and homes and more homes they also you know along with that there is potentially an opportunity to provide new, new community facilities as well so that is the dialogue and you know the dialogue is being uh, undertaken here, particularly, you know, particularly specifically, uh, in in terms of you know that those commitments around continuity of service. You know, it, 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 we've got to achieve that. We have to have that dialogue. But I would like us to have that dialogue, and you know, ways that we might be able to uh, kind of deal with the, the with the matters around te temporary moves, how we can do that on the Ashburton temporary buildings, maybe, and what have you. You know, let's have that that conversation because maybe the end goal is is one that's worth worth trying to pursue. Absolutely, thanks, Chris. And I think um, just carrying on on the theme there, uh, Sandra says I'd also like to reiterate the impact that the closure of the youth centre will have on the community. You did say a temporary site will be considered if affordable. What then happens if it's not affordable? Um, are you able just to give a bit more information there? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, th I think that the reality is, you know, if we can't accommodate and provide that 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 continuity of service, it's, you know, I, th I think, as I say, you know, the, the period runs until the end of December. And, you know, I, I think you can draw your own conclusions. You know, if we can't satisfy that condition, you know, as I say, it, it, I, I just feel it would be very, very sad to lose that opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. And Justin Hatfield, as a volunteer mentor, I know continuity across the whole range of regenerate activities is essential. Without this, young people will drift away into the all too common dangers that we know all too well exist on the estate and estate. So um, absolutely. Thank you, Justin, for your comment. I, I, absolutely well put. Uh, we had a question here. Uh, Andy, so a comment here from Andy. Uh, it would be really good to consult with Youth Legal also as they run their uh, free legal advice for young people from there too. Yeah, um, 
completely aware of them. Absolutely, we'd like to um, keen to have conversations with them, and we will be. Uh, and I'm sure uh, the team here have already approached them. Uh, if not, then um, we'll be certain to do that. But um, thank you for that. That's appreciated. Um, thank you, Fleur. Uh, it's just message. Uh, sorry to be late, but I'm here to hear local views about the development and future of the youth centre. Thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Can, can I just confirm? I mean, will the this recording be available, Alex? Yes. Yeah, we should we should be able to make that available. So, um, great. so we we will be able to provide a link on on our website. Um, yeah. You know, and make that that clear, and we can can clearly try and publicise that as 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 best we can. Yeah. And um, if anybody this evening, obviously, if you need a link um, and you can't find it, do feel free to, to email through, um, as mentioned. So as I said earlier on, if you have any questions, feel free to, to get in touch. Um, Nadia here asks a question about safeguarding. Uh, so there are safeguarding considerations for the Ashburton Youth Club and its beneficiaries. How can you guarantee this with flats sharing the same site? So just about obviously the relationship there between. I think that's a very fair question. And I think that's one we would need to take away and respond to very, very clearly. Yeah, I, I, will, I will say with that, Alex, is that um, uh, the project team has worked on other projects involving uh, nurseries, schools, playgrounds, and those considerations are um, are the same. And we hear the question, uh, we hear the comment. And it's something that uh, we will need to demonstrate through through the design proposals. Um, and it's something that we've got experience in and it's something that, that we acknowledge uh, needs to be demonstrated. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, Andy, uh, take on board your comment as well. Muga and Regenerate Interlinked we need to stick together. Um, thank you. Uh, and okay, just having a look, see again, making sure we're covering off all of the themes uh, and questions that are being asked. If you have a question uh, about a, any topic or any theme that hasn't yet been answered this evening, um, do feel free to post it. But I think otherwise we have covered a lot of the themes that are on here. I mean, also just to say, Alex, I mean, if, if Andy's happy, I mean, I sent Andy an email around the commitments and uh, and in relation to continuity of service. And as long as Andy's happy, I mean, we're happy to kind of post those commitments on our uh, kind of web pages. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Helen, um, taking on board your comment here as well, as a resident of the Ashburton estate, the services that Regenerate provides are worth more than any new homes being packed into such a small space. Current residents, especially all the young people, should be given greater priority. The estate has become a much better place to live since Regenerate moved in. Obviously, I think there's a balance here to be struck. Um, I think obviously the borough needs to provide new homes, but absolutely take on board your, your comment there about making sure that we're providing first rate services um, for the young people who, who use the, uh, the youth centre. So um, thank you for that. We'll certainly take that away. Um, and again, apologies, I'm just double checking, going through all the questions, making sure that we're covering off things. We've obviously already answered questions about parking, about consistency of service on site. Um, I think we've, uh, there are still questions there, but I think we have answered most of those. Uh, Fleur Anderson just says, we have lost many youth services in Wandsworth and need to see continuity of provision by Regenerate, which has the trust of local young people where it is. Uh, Regenerate, oops, uh, Regenerate are one of very few youth uh, provisions and I'm concerned about their future if the centre goes. Okay, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, um, Fleur. And I would say uh, to, to, to the MP, um, you know, that commitment has been given and I understand that uh, if you don't mind, for, that uh, you wrote to uh, the Director of Children's Services and I know she responded in kind uh, in, in that respect. Um, I would say, Helen, uh, I know there's a, another question about a youth club. I can't talk about a youth club. I can talk about this site and the commitments that are being given 
um, here and the ones that I've I've sought from you know the relevant directors. Thank you, Chris and Jennifer. You ask about has anyone considered the sheltered housing next door? Um, I don't quite know what you mean in terms of have we considered, but um, uh, obviously they they are neighbouring to the site, so we will obviously be considering everybody who is immediately neighbouring and surrounding the site. But does anyone else from project team have anything to say about the sheltered housing next door? Uh, like you say, Alex, uh, through the through the design process and through the planning process and through the next stages over the next few months, we'll be assessing all the surrounding uh, land uses uh, to ensure that there aren't um, unacceptable adverse impacts on on any uh, any property or, or any any piece of land uh, surrounding and in close proximity to the site. Great, thank you, and thank you, Fleur, for your further comment. There, um, we'd be very grateful to. To talk to you further about, about the proposals. Um, that'd be much appreciated. Um, Joseph, the question I have is, are we actively looking after our young people and how we continue to do this when obviously youth clubs in this area and the surrounding areas are continuing to be closed down? Hopefully you've heard from us that uh, it's certainly not our intention to close Regenerate down whatsoever. Um, so uh, hopefully that's loud and clear to you. I don't know if anyone else from the project team wants to add any more to that at all. No, I, but, yeah, yeah. I, can. I mean, as I say, you know, as, as long as kind of Andy's comfortable uh, with it, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to post the email I sent to him around continuity of services, valued services, um, identified as such by the Director of Children's Services. And so, as I say. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Um, and reading your other comment there, Joseph, about obviously um, using the youth club over the last 13 years um, being an important hub for you and others like you. So um, absolutely, thank you very much for your comment. That is useful to um, get an understanding from, um, from the youth centre goes. So thank you very much. Um, OK, great. Well, I think I'm going to start drawing it to a close because I think we have addressed nearly all the questions there. Alex, I believe there's one from Zarina that we didn't quite cover. Sure, if you've Can got... I also ask, I mean, really, I, I just really dislike foul language, you know, and I think I think it might have been taken down, but we do not need people swearing. You know, I, I just find that kind of rude, and, you know, we're trying to listen, and, you know, this is a dialogue. It's not about people swearing at each other. It's not clever. No, thanks, Chris. Thank you, and I think, you know, I appreciate that lots of people have opinions about this and uh, tensions can run high about these sorts of things all the time. But um, I think as has hopefully been made clear this evening, we're very much wanting to work with the community on this, making sure that we're bringing something forward that everybody will welcome. So, um, you know, uh, hosting this this evening is very much part of that process. So we're very much wanting to work with you. Um, so hopefully we can have a two way conversation about this. Um, Sorry, Chris Hayhurst, what was the question? You may have seen it or have it to have. Oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, Zarina asked, <coughs> uh, has this new site been raised and discussed with the youth themselves? Do they get a say to what happens uh, to their space? Um, so, I've uh, spoken to Andy and I believe Andy's spoken uh, to the current users of the Ashburton Youth Club. Uh, you might have seen in our newsletter we would look to hold uh, workshops uh, with the current users um, and with the management of Regenerate um, and in particular the the way that the youth centre is used um, a big part of reproviding it is making sure that it is absolutely fit for purpose and so getting everyone's input both management and users and visitors uh, will enable us to do that to to the best of uh, our abilities um, in particular, the internal layout and, and the uses of it and the external landscaping, uh, as Sarah uh, touched on earlier, um, as well as the uh, smaller community projects that happen outside. Um, so, yeah, we would be looking to get uh, everyone together and, and hopefully uh, uh, all contribute to that together. Thanks, Chris. A um, couple more comments just coming in here at the end on a few slightly different topics. Uh, so we'll take those. Um, obviously, Andy just says, yes, happy for you to share what your email said, Chris. So thank you very much, Andy. Um, 
Justin says, I think it is worth emphasizing how difficult it would be to rebuild, regenerate activities to current levels should there be a break in any of its multi activities due to a move to a temporary facility that can't accommodate all of them. And that's similar in theme to Helen's question there that's just come in what will happen to the feel good bakery? Um, they would need a location that is fit for purpose with food provision. I think um, before I hand over to the team, I think it's fair enough to say that particularly some of the conversations that Chris and others have had with Andy at the moment have very much been around making sure, again, like we've said throughout this evening, continuity of service, making sure that if there were a temporary move, that those services and activities could still, could still continue. Um, I don't know if anyone else had anything to add to that. Well, again, I mean, I'll re-emphasize it, that, you know, that, you, that you're getting from the council, as it were. You know, the, the importance here is, and, and you know, apologies if I'm using the wrong term, Andy, but, you know, social enterprises like this are absolutely have to be valued and have to be nurtured and have to be sustained. So, you know, if, if we found that uh, alternative location, and as I say, I've talked about kind of temporary buildings and, and what have you, you know, those are the things that we would have to specify into those buildings. Brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, well, I'm going to draw to a close there. I think um, we've covered all of the topics that have been raised in the questions this evening. So I hope that everyone who's joined us tonight, you have found that very helpful. Um, again, just want to reiterate, this is very much the beginning of our kind of pre-application, as we would call it, uh, consultation, our engagement with yourselves. Um, we, as I said, we want to have a dialogue with you throughout the whole process. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, diggers aren't going to arrive tomorrow at all. So this is a long process. We want to have a conversation with yourselves, make sure um, we're getting everybody's feedback, everybody's input. Um, and as I say, uh, what more can I say than that, that we really do want to include everybody in this process. So again, if you have any questions after this evening, um, do feel free to contact the team. Email address was developmentteam at richmondandwandsworth.gov.uk. That's developmentteam at richmondandwandsworth.gov.uk. Um, you send in your questions, otherwise we'll be sure to get back in touch with you. More information will be coming forward uh, as and when it's ready. Um, otherwise, thank you everybody and thank you to the project team this evening for your time and giving up your evening to talk about the project um, and for answering those questions. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you.